Welcome to today's episode of All Things in AI and Machine Learning. This is a, a podcast in the series of interesting trending topics that we are covering in the space of AI and machine learning. Let us continue discussion on cutting edge advancements with respect to vector embedding techniques. Especially after the introduction of GPT modules, there's a lot of hype with respect to this concept called as vectors and vector embeddings. My name is Sharat, and with me, we have Aditya, who is a luminar in the world of AI research. Aditya, it's fantastic to have you back with us for this episode to explore the frontiers of vector embeddings. Yes, thank you, Sharat. Thank you so much for having me again. So we know that the landscape of vector embeddings has gone a remarkable transformation particularly with the advent of the transformer architect and the transformer based algorithms like the gpt algorithm so i'm definitely very eager to discuss these advancements and their implications for the field sorry let's start with uh, let's start with a basic uh, concept um, somebody was uh, discussing about vector embeddings. I'm, I'm trying to correlate those things. So let me try and put this point forward and uh, then we'll probably elaborate this uh, uh, point. Uh, I want uh, you to uh, share your insights into it. So let's say uh, we have a huge library which is containing full of books and magazines and articles and right, different, different uh, uh, write-ups. The point is in this library, each piece of writing would be unique. But at the same time, there would be clusters. So, for example, some books would be uh, travel related, some books would be cookbooks, some could, uh, some could be science fictions, etc. Now, what if we could create a magical library where every book isn't just sorted by its genre, but it's placed precisely according to how similar content of every other book is mapped? And in this magical library or books, right? Say, for example, if I have uh, cookbooks, vegetarian recipes, for example, then it has to go close to vegan ones, but it also has to be placed very far away from barbecue guides. It's just like clustering concept in machine learning that we discuss. Now, this is something uh, which is very related to vector embeddings in digital world. I want Aditya, you to. Uh, share your insights and probably demystify this example that I have just quoted. Yes, definitely. So when we specifically talk about data science, right, we have to understand that we are dealing with all kinds of data. The data can be numbers. It can be something like user preferences. It can be images, videos, text, etc. Right now. For us, for us humans, understanding these differences is quite simple. For, for as long as we remember, we have been able to distinguish between them. But computers don't work the same way. A very basic concept in computer science is that they are unable to process the raw information as is. They need it in some kind of mathematical formulas. Specifically, they need numbers. Right? So let us try and stick to the words for a moment right in a digital world we can think of these vector embeddings as a magical space where every word has some kind of numerical representation but it is not random we are not just randomly throwing some number at a word no we are putting similar words close to each other so if you look at synonyms right you might have synonyms placed close to each other. So, for example, happy might be near joyful, but it will have a specific bit of distance from a word like sad. Right. <clears throat> and the beauty of vector embeddings is that it allows computers to understand context and relationship between the words. This way, when we are processing language, the computer isn't just seeing a random string of characters it is seeing a rich medley of interconnected meanings 
Ha, Madle, right? That's that's nice way to put it. So, how do we create these embeddings, Aditya? So, without going too deep into the technicality of it, it involves a lot of data and some clever algorithms. We feed massive amount of text to these algorithms and they analyze the context in which the word appears right so we know that each word can have dif- some words can have different meaning depending on the context so that is what these algorithms do so over a period of time as they are learning more and more they start to learn the position of each word in a high dimensional space that reflects how those words are used in real life Hmm, that that sounds quite uh, like a process, and I'm I'm pretty sure it might have tons of applications as well. Uh, for example, search engines um, to help uh, machines understand what humans are trying to uh, speak. Uh, voice uh, assistants like Siri. Uh, then we have chatbots that we are very very uh, widely using today. Is it? Yes, absolutely. You can say that the possibilities with vector embeddings are vast and it's not just understanding of language that becomes better embeddings are very useful in recommendation systems they are very useful for analysis of user behavior and we can create efficient and intelligent agents in a variety of different fields hmm, that sounds like vector embeddings are basically uh, are like bridge between uh, us humans and machines isn't it yes yes that is a great way to put vector embeddings right they bridge the gap on the understanding of the same thing between humans and machines by embedding words or any kind of data into vectors we are translating them into something that the machine can understand without losing the context or the meaning of those uh, words or any other kind of data all right so let us let us also try and take this discussion to something uh, more advanced and more related to the current uh, time um let, let let me ask you about how vector embedding techniques have actually evolved uh, with the concept called gpt and uh, chat gpt of course right it, it's making big waves in the industry and especially in the space of nlp it has revolutionized how the text can be processed yes definitely post gpt we have seen a, pro- a proliferation of transform based models that have pushed the boundaries of vector embeddings one key advancement that we observe in the industry is the refinement of the way embeddings are generated to capture the deeper contextual meaning for instance techniques have evolved to create more nuanced embeddings that are not just looking at the immediate context but looking at the entire discourse structure okay could you elaborate on specific models or techniques that probably you would have worked on yes definitely so after gpt models we have models like bert and the various successors of the bert model like roberta and ernie which have introduced a more complex and sophisticated way of handling context bird for example uses bidirectional training which allows it to understand the context from both directions so it's looking backward and it is looking forward this makes the embedding exceptionally rich in semantic information ernie goes further by integrating the world knowledge into the training process and this enhances the model's ability to grasp nuanced meanings aditya thank you for joining us today and sharing your expertise it was really wonderful discussion yes thank you sharad thank you so much for uh, having me here and we are definitely very excited to discuss these advancements great great um, thank you all our listeners for tuning into this podcast uh, with ai and machine uh, learning discussion we will try to bring in more interesting um concepts with respect to all things that we talk about with ai and machine learning um join us next time as we explore more and uh, right these exciting trends uh, in in the technology 
have a safe uh, life and uh, thank you friends